What is going on everybody and welcome to the second video in this Dash and Plotly tutorial series. Today we're going to be going over some of the Dash core components such as graphs and drop downs and inputs and we're going to be structuring the basics of our HTML uh, for our web page. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is install this library called IEX Finance. So you can see right here you can install it by a pip command and then IEX Finance, all one word. Uh, now, IEX Finance, just as a small aside, is a library for Python that allows you to get data from the IEX Exchange, which was created by Brad Katsuyama in an effort to uh, kind of curb high-frequency trading. It's actually a pretty interesting topic, and if you want to hear more about it, they talk a lot about it in Michael Lewis's book, Flash Boys, which is all about the story of Brad Katsuyama. So, short little aside there that's pretty cool. Um, now, once we've installed that, we're going to import IEX Finance, okay? And we'll just start by commenting this out for a sec because we don't really need to run it. And you can bulk comment by hitting command or control and a forward slash in PyCharm. So we'll also probably need a set of start and end dates for our data frame that we're gonna return. So we'll use date time for that. And we'll also use this uh, function within date util, which is uh, relative delta. Now this is going to be for uh, creating our fixed range sort of of a time frame. And the reason for that is IEX Finance only supports five years worth of historical data. So we're always going to need, be, need to be pulling five years from today's date or else IEX is going to return an invalid response from their API. Um, and we'll go more into their API in a sec. Cool. So let's just get the start and end dates down. So start is equal to date time dot date time and we'll say today minus relative delta and then years is going to be equal to five. So what we're doing right there is just subtracting five days from today's date for our start date and our end date is going to be equal to date time dot date time dot today. Great. And now we'll issue our data frame. So that will be the function get historical underscore data. We'll enter in a symbol. So I'll just do uh, general electric. And then our start date is going to be equal to our start variable. End date is going to be equal to our end variable. And we'll set an output format equal to a pandas data frame. Great. So you can see right here, we don't have our um, function. So you can see right here, get historical data is in red. That's probably because we didn't import it. So I can say from IEX finance import get historical data. Great. And what we can do is just print the head of our data frame to make sure everything's working. And it might take a second since my computer is super slow. And we see right here, we returned a response of our data frame from the API, which is terrific. So I just want to go a little bit into the IEX API for a sec. So I'm going to link this in the description. Uh, now you can find stocks and all sorts of requests you can issue right here. Um, and this is what I use for the most part. And an API, basically think of it as a way of returning data um, by means that you're going to send an HTTP request, a get request to a, uh, a website basically or a server, and they're going to send you a response back with data. That's uh, at a bare minimum, sort of what an API is. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to be using it for this tutorial. And I don't want to go too much into that. I just wanted to show you guys kind of where I'm getting the data from, because I know a lot of you, a lot of people out there still struggle with getting data sources and using APIs. Uh, however, we got our data, so we don't need to worry about it. And the next step would be creating our graph. So we're going to use Plotly for this, and we can import Plotly dot graph objects 
as Go. It's typically imported with the name Go. And next we can start to create our data. So we can say trace underscore close. And the reason I'm using trace here is because in Plotly, this is another convention that if you do have multiple areas on a graph that you're going to be plotting or a data frame. So for this instance, we're going to be plotting the close, but we're also going to be plotting the high, low and open. So we kind of want to separate them. And in case we want to only display a few, we're going to separate them into individual lists. So uh, we're going to say trace close equals go dot scatter. So our x is going to be equal to df.index, and we should probably include this in a list format. Great. Our y is going to include the close within the index. There we go. And the name that we're going to assign is going to be close. And the line, we can set a line color here. So we'll just say equals in a dictionary format, color equals, um, we'll just say, we'll pick an RGB color from here. I use this all the time, so we'll just do something like this. Maybe a red line. Great. So there's our data, and we'll assign it to a data variable within a list. So trace close, and within here we could have trace close, trace high, trace low. Um, you get the picture with that. And next we're going to set our layout for our graph, which is going to be a dictionary format, and the title of the graph is going to be equal to stock chart. Great. And we are not going to so show the legend. Okay. I think that should do it for the layout. Now, we're going to set this to a figure variable. So, again, another dictionary format. So data is going to be equal to the data. And then layout is going to be equal to the layout. So pretty much all we really need is the data and the layout. So pretty self-explanatory there. Um, now we can actually uncomment this and embed it in our Dash app. So what we'll do is uh, we'll sign it to another HTML div. And within here, we'll say dcc.graph. And then we can also add a label above that. So I'll probably do that to start html.label dash graph. Cool. And what we'll do right here is assign an ID. So I'm just going to say stock chart. And our figure within there is going to be equal to our fig variable. Great. So let's try and run this. And it looks like we don't have a label because label needs to be capitalized. And we'll just wait for our server to boot up on our local machine, or the web app rather. And we'll click there, and boom, we have a stock chart with a H1 label, and then just a regular old HTML label, and we are uh, charting General Electric. So yeah, not a great story for GE this year, um, or kind of <laughs> for a long time. But we can kind of modify this a little bit. So let's say we want our title to be a little different. We can say, we'll assign it to input stock. So that'll be a variable, and we'll put that right here. Input stock, and input stock equals, let's do Verizon next. So that'll do that, that'll assign it automatically. Um, and 
now we can just throw a few more elements on there. Uh, we're not going to structure them yet with CSS. We'll do that in a later tutorial. I think this is getting a little lengthy, but uh, I'm just going to show you some of the other dash components that we can use. So uh, let's say we want an input for a stock that we could enter and it would automatically refresh with a callback on the graph. So we can do that by saying HTML or we'll do DCC dot input. It will assign an ID. We kind of always want an ID there uh, within HTML. That's pretty common. So I'll do stock input. We'll do use a placeholder, which is going to be equal to enter a stock to be charted. And we'll set the type to text. And our current value will be equal to nothing. So we could set the current value to an automatic value we want, like Apple or the S&P or something like that. But either way, I'm going to encase this in an HTML div as well. Cool. So we'll save that and then wait for it to make sure we ran correctly. And we have an input right there. So with some CSS, we can style that and make it look a lot better. Um, we will just minimize this for a sec. And I think the last element that I'm probably going to go over that I use quite a bit is the drop down element. So let's say theoretically we want to choose a different type of chart, like a candlestick or a line or something like that. I can do another HTML div. And within there, I can just say DCC dot drop down. So DCC again is the dash core components. So what I'll do is say options equals a list. So what's going to be within that list? It's going to be three separate dictionaries. Or actually I'll just do two for the sake of simplicity. We'll say the label is going to be equal to, let's say, um, candlestick. And the value we can set to the same thing. And I'll just copy and paste this down here. And we'll do line here, and then line here. And I'll, we don't have to run it, I'll just save it. You can see right here, we can select a different type of chart. Um, so I think that should just about do it for this tutorial. It's just a simple overview of the dash core components. So to go over what we did, we put a few on here, we put a label, an input, and a drop down, and we also used our first chart within our Dash web app. So pretty cool. We have Verizon in here that we inputted through a variable, and you can see Verizon's doing a little better. So yeah, I think that just about concludes it for the concludes it for this tutorial. Um, join me in the next one where we go over some basic styling and probably some more advanced Dash components. See you later, and join me in the next one.